Welcome back. In this video, we will create our very first app from scratch. So what I want you to do is to go to your view menu and select command palette. It will open up this menu and you can just type flutter and you'll get an option that says new application project. So you can go into your folder where you want to save your projects and you can just select the folder. Now I'm going to name this one flutter my first app. And uh, you'll see that when I name my Flutter applications, we will start off with everything lowercase and only using the underscore if needed. Now I'm going to click on enter and this will create my whole project for me in Visual Studio Code. Right, as soon as it's done, it will tell you at the bottom, your Flutter project is ready. Connect the device and press F5 to start running. Now I already have a device open here, but if you do not, you can go and click at the bottom there where mine says Nexus. It for yours, it should say maybe Chrome there, if it can pick up that you've got the Chrome browser, or it could be something else, or even no device at all. And uh, you can go then to the list at the top, and you can create a new emulator. But we've done that in the previous video on Android Studio, where you created your own virtual devices. Now, you can also then just launch one of the devices you already created. So mine is right at the top. It says mobile. For Android, it could say something like uh, start the Android emulator. Because I'm on a Mac, I will be able to start the iOS emulator from here as well. So I've got my Nexus 6 running, so just make sure that you choose a device that you're currently running on. Now, we're going to start from scratch. So you'll see right at the top, we've got import the material package. And we've got the main method. And we've seen now that the main method is the starting point for every application in Dart. And this includes your Flutter application also. So I'm going to delete all of the other coding there so that I only have the main method there and this run app command. Now, what I'm going to do here is to not start it as my app, but just use as material app. Now, if you look at the class called material app, you can hold down your command key. And if you're on a Windows machine, you can hold down control and you will see it. If you hover over it, it actually gives you some information about the class and you can go through it. You will see that material app extends a stateful widget, which means that the material app is in fact a widget. If we go down, you will see then these are the values that we can set and you can see the curly braces there, which means these are all named arguments and you can see they are not required, which means even running it now won't give me an error. So this widget home is one of the base things that we will be using. And you can have a look at my Dart video on composition to see how this works. But this is basically just composition where in the material app, I'm using another class called widget and using an object from that class. So this home widget is the one that we will start off with. And we'll have a look at all of these other options that we have as part of the material app class. But uh, the most important one for now is this widget uh, that we're going to send through at, in the home property. So let's set up the home property. And in order to get to the home property, it's a named argument. So you just go and type home there and you can select it. And you can see it accepts a widget. And this is the widget for the default root of the app. This is the root that's displayed first when the application is started normally. So what do we want to display when the app starts normally? So I'm going to say text, just use a simple text widget. And uh, you will see then that the text widget itself accepts as the very first argument, a positional argument, string data. And then after the positional argument, we've got these named arguments. So the first one has to be entered. And that is your text that you want to display. So I'm just going to say hello world. Now, if I save this, you will see that there's if I if I leave out the comma there and I save it again, everything is on one line. So please to remember this for the formatting in Visual Studio Code. After every widget, you can actually go and put commas. And if you save it, it will nicely show you what's going on. Even after this hello world, because there's some other arguments that we can also use, you can save and it will nicely display it. And you can also see that it adds some comments right at the end. So I can see this comma there is the end of the text widget. This comma there is the end of the material app widget.
So what we currently have is the material app widget and inside of that widget we've got a text widget and we've seen now that this home is basically what will be displayed when the app starts. So we're going to just display some text. So let's run this quickly. So you can click on run there on the right hand side top and this little run tab will open up at the top or widget or whatever you call this thing will open up at the top and allows you to quickly stop or run or pause or whatever you want to do with your app. So this first initial run will take quite a while in order to install the APK on your Android device now. So just give it some time, we'll come back now. Alright, so now we can see Hello World is displayed on the screen as soon as the app starts running and you can see it's all red text and it's underlined in yellow. So that happens because there's no theme applied to this specific material app that we're using. And one way to correct that is to use something that we call a scaffold, which creates basically a widget for the whole screen. And that really creates apps that we are used to. So instead of using this text right from the start, I'm going to cut this part and you can see there's the comma for the text. So from the comma up until that text widget there, I'm going to cut it out and I'm going to use a scaffold widget. Now the scaffold, if you hover over it, hold down your control key, and hover over it again, you will see that the scaffold also extends a stateful widget, which is also a widget. But this widget actually, if you click on it using control, it says that the scaffold is designed to be a top level container for a material app. This means that adding a scaffold to each route on a material app will provide the app with materials basic visual layout structure. So that's basically creating an app that we used to. Now, Inside of the scaffold, you will see that there's a body, there's an app bar, which is also some sort of widget. The body is a widget, the floating action button is a widget, and so you can carry on. There's a lot of widgets in here, bottom sheet, there's, uh, there's a drawer, there's an end drawer, there's a bottom navigation bar. All of them are widgets that we can use as part of the scaffold class. Now, one of them that we want to use now is what is called the body of the scaffold. So we're going to use the body argument there and in the body I'm going to paste my text widget now. Then there's one comma too many so we'll just remove the comma and save again. Now let's run the app again and see how it looks now. Right so now instead of having a black page you can see that we've got a white page there and there's your hello world right on the left hand side top. You can see hello world there. So let's just see how we can get this hello world in the middle of the page by adding a widget on top of the text widget. So what we've done, what we've done now with the scaffold was to actually take away or to cut out the text part and then replace it with something else and then putting the text back again. So the easiest route to go is to hold down your control key and then use the dot. And that brings up a new menu that will say wrap with a widget, wrap with center, wrap with column, container, padding, row, size box, and some others. So what we want to do is to just wrap it with a center widget. And it actually did everything we wanted it to do now without copying and pasting or cutting out and pasting it again. Now if you hover over the center widget, you will see it extends a line. And you can see that it creates a widget that centers its child. So it's got a property called child, which is also taking a widget. So if we run this now, you're just using the center widget on top of the text widget will get our text centered in wherever you call the center, which means in this case, it will be centered inside of the scaffold's body. Right, so at this stage, is, it's starting to look like something. And maybe we can just change the text a bit so that we can get a bit bigger text there. So in order to do that, if you go to your text class there, you will see that we've got a property called style. So let's use the style now. I'm going to say style there. And I'm going to use, if you just hover over the style, you can see it accepts a text style. So let's use the class called text style. The constructor of that class has properties as well. And we can see that there's a font size, there's a font weight and so forth. So let's just use the font size for now. And we set the font size to 60. Now I'm going to run this again and let's see how it changes. Right, so now we can see that it changes to the hello world, which is a lot bigger now. 
Okay, so let's just add something else also here. So instead of having the text widget there, let's have a container first. So I'm going to wrap it with the widget, but in this case, the container is one of the options there. So I'm going to wrap it with a container, which means in the scaffold, we'll have a center widget that will center the container. And inside of the container, there's a text widget. Now a container, you can see creates a widget that combines common painting, positioning and sizing widgets and the height and the width values include the padding. So let's just have something that's got a width of let's say 360 and we can set a color for the container. So let's just type color there and use the colors class. And if you put a dot there, you can see that we can look at some of these colors on how to set them and values that are available for us. So let's make it red. So colors.red and you will also see that in the material color palette we've actually got some other values that we can also use. So if you put the dot there and say red and you hover over it you will see that there's a lot of different shades of red that we can actually use. So colors.red is actually this one that's showing now and if you scroll down you can see that to get to your darker colors you use the block brackets there and using a 900 is the darkest color in the red. And then there's an 800 and a 700 and then it goes to lighter shades up until the shade of 50. So maybe we can have a red 700 there and save this again and let's run it again. Right so now we can see we've got a red block around that hello world and you can even see now that even though it is centered this container the container is in the center of the screen, but the text inside of the container is not. If you hover over that text widget, you can see that, let me just remove this, hover over the text widget, you can see there's a text align property, for example. So we can go to text align and then use text align to center the text inside of this container. Now, Last thing we're going to do is to quickly just give our text some color and that we do as part of the text style. So I'm going to put a comma there and use the color and set the color to colors.white. I'm shorting a comma there. So let's just put a comma there and a bracket and then run it again and now it looks a bit better. So now you can see by using the text align property of the text widget I'm aligning this text inside of the container which is red and has got a width of 360. I am aligning it inside of that container. Okay so this is just a few widgets to get you started. So in the next videos we will look at the text widget for example, we'll look at the container widget just to go through all of the different properties that we can actually set on these widgets. But for now we've got a fully functional running application. And also inside of the scaffold, for example, you will see there's an app bar also, which is also a widget. So we can also go and say app bar, add the app bar class there at the top. And then you can see there's something that you call, there's a leading widget, there's a title widget. So I'm going to use the title there. Let's use the title parameter there. And I'm going to use a normal text widget there with just saying something like, welcome. And now if we run this again, we will start seeing apps that looks like the apps that we actually see on the Play Store, which has got that blue bar at the top with some information and maybe some actions there at the top with the body of your specific screen and inside of the middle of the screen, we're showing Hello World. So this is just a very basic application to get us started. So in the next videos, we will look at some of these widgets that we've used now and some more complex widgets. Now before we move on you will see that we started with the material app widget. As part of the material app there's a scaffold. As part of the scaffold there's an app bar as well as a center widget. As part of the center widget there's a container. As part of the container there's a text widget. As part of this app bar there's also a text widget. So we start seeing something that we call a widget tree. So your widget tree basically looks like this now. We've got a material app. Inside of the material app we've got the scaffold. The scaffold has got an app bar and a center widget. The app bar has got a text widget that says welcome. The center widget's got a container 
which is red, and 360 in width, and it's got a text widget that says Hello World. So this is what we call a widget tree. And we will be looking at these widget trees as we carry on because our application could get a lot more complicated real fast. But if you keep track on what are you actually doing inside of your application using something like a widget tree will help you a lot to see where you need to change what. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.